All right, welcome back to the Kitchen Group Research uh, video channel. Today I'm going to talk about a paper that was just accepted from our group on sequential sampling methods for finding classification boundaries in engineering applications. Like the gist of the idea is we want to find this boundary that is uh, in here and you could sample this whole space and find the points that are in and the points that are out and use that to, to separate it. But this takes a lot of work and you do a lot of work in the regions that aren't that interesting. And what we worked on in this paper is how do we find points that are uh, only close and to minimize the, the number of points that you need to do this. All right, so in a nutshell, we need these boundaries between two things um, in lots of places. For example, you might have a one phase region or two phase region as a function of composition and you want to find the boundary that separates them. Or you might uh, want to know what part of the space meets a constraint and what, what part doesn't, uh, so that you can find a dividing line, or above a threshold or below, etc. And so what we do in this work is show how to combine classification algorithms with a form of active learning to find those boundaries efficiently. So the classifiers don't need any specific equations for the system, which means we can use it for a lot of different boundaries in a lot of uh, different applications. All right, so here are the three examples we look at. The one on the left we call the shower problem. You can adjust the temperature of your water and the, uh, or you can adjust the amount of cold water and the amount of hot water and the volumes, and that leads to an overall temperature and an overall volumetric flow. You want the conditions to be in this square uh, in this output, and we want to find this boundary on the right um, here that shows you what, uh, what settings you can use to get a good shower. The second problem is a ternary alloy uh, of nickel iron aluminum and what we find in this ternary phase space is that anything in region 1 ends up being protected against oxidation because it forms an aluminous skin and everything else suffers from oxidation and so we want a way to find this boundary using uh, these classifiers. The third example is looking at a van der Waal equation of state where inside this envelope you have a two-phase region and outside you have a one-phase region and we would like to be able to make samples that find this boundary uh, for us. All right, we looked at three different algorithms in here. One is called broad initial sampling. It's kind of like a grid but you put uh, random points or um, Latin hypercube or Sobol, whatever your sampling choice is you classify them, you get an initial guess of where the boundary is, and then you refine around the boundary to put uh, points so that you get a better and better uh, prediction. The second is a low density uh, point sampling where you initially you start and keep adding points uh, around the boundary wherever uh, you have low density and you keep going until you find uh, the boundary. And the last one we call path tracing which is you have a, a point on a boundary, and then you can estimate what is the derivative of the boundary uh, in the vicinity, and then you uh, trace the path by taking small steps uh, and going along to find that, that boundary. So those are the three algorithms. Um, we looked at a metric, couple of metrics for success. One is how well do we find the right area? What is the number of experiments? We want to minimize that. What is the average distance of points to the boundary? That is, we don't want points far from the boundary because they don't contribute uh, very much information. And uh, how, how confident are we in the boundary? And so we have this weighted score, which takes those four metrics, multiplies them by some weights, and a lower score is a better algorithm in this case. Okay, so here's how uh, we went about doing the work. This is the, the shower problem that I indicated. The kind of brute force way of doing this is you make, uh, say, 100 samples in the space, you figure out whether it's inside or outside, and with 100 experiments, this is the kind of boundary that you get because we don't have a very fine uh, mesh around, uh, around the border. And you see we have a quite large gray area, That's, that is our confidence interval, uh, or 95% confidence of where the true boundary might be. If we look at these three different algorithms, all of them do a much better job at finding something that is approximately the correct boundary. And the um, BIS and, uh, and path tracing, 
they find better boundaries than this coarse grained one with only about 70 experiments. So 30% reduction in number of experiments uh, to find a, a pretty reasonable looking boundary. And you can see most of the points end up around uh, where the boundary is. And so you can do better than this uh, coarse grid with almost anything uh, in here. The second problem um, we have is this uh, ternary alloy. And the way this measure, the way these boundaries were originally found is by making a ternary alloy composition spread alloy film from the Gelman group. And then they measured at 169 points uh, all throughout here. And then they were able to find this region here that uh, had alumina and was protected. So 169 measurements is what was uh, required to do this. Now we're only finding one boundary here and they were able to find all of these other ones. So there's, there's a little bit of, of um, difference in what, what we end up achieving, but we can find a good boundary for this protected region with as few as 49 samples um, in this experiment by using these different algorithms. So that's also nice. Um, that is uh, a reduction in work required to find the one boundary. The last example is the, the Van der Waal equation of state. So that is a classic equation of state in thermodynamics. Here is, is the envelope that you get for the two phase region. For each one of these points, we do an equal area um, estimation to find the, the correct pressure. And if you do 100 points over here, you get a a very rough looking boundary that uh, isn't, isn't very smooth like this. Uh, over here we get much better looking boundaries and in fewer experiments, maybe 20% fewer experiments in this case, by choosing these points um, along here. All right, so in summary, the control method grid sampling is, is worse than all of the algorithms in the metric that, that I presented. Sometimes in some dimensions it's comparable. Um, but in general, uh, it's always worse. The path tracing tended to have the best score. Uh, that is the lowest composite metric. BIS was a close second. And the main advantage over BIS, uh, this broad initial sampling, is that um, you do, over the, the control method anyway, is that we do sequential sampling. So we don't do all 100 at once. We do a small number, and then refine, and then refine. And that ends up being less than doing all of them uh, at once. The downside of path tracing is you do need to know a point on the boundary to get started. So you can't start from scratch uh, and, and go with path tracing. You may have to do BIS to get a initial starting point or you need some knowledge uh, in advance. So that is, uh, that is the new paper in a nutshell. It is open access. You can find the DOI in the video description. And thanks for listening and I hope you come back for another paper.